it is a very good day to you all. We are talking from the prophets. A lot of day words in the season that I have. And I believe in the season God is speaking to us prophetically. And I challenge you to please go through the teaching in this season. And make it part of your life as wise virgins for what is laying ahead. Let's pray. Thank you, Father, for who you are, what you do. We honor you, Lord, that we have the privilege of knowing you. And I pray, Holy Spirit, that you will come and take the word and make it alive and arrest our focus, arrest our lives according to the patterns set out for us, the principles, especially in this season, like never before. We trust you for that, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let it be so. Great. We are talking from Jeremiah. The book Jeremiah, written by this prophet. And, uh, oh, we can do 20 sermons from this, 20 teachings, different teachings. But I just took something that I believe God is saying to us for this season. And I want to say, I want to call it God's word as fire in my life. God's word as a fire in your life. We read in Jeremiah 23 verse 29. God saying, is not my word like fire? And then also chapter 5 verse 14. I will make my words in your mouth a fire. God will make his words in your mouth a fire. Only if you allow him. Otherwise, it can just be the letter bring, that brings death. And there will be words being put in your mouth, and it will be different type of fires. It will be a destructive fire coming forth through your mouth, where we see in the Word of God in James 3, that says the tongue can be lit from hell as a fire that can destroy. So hell's fire can come and work through my, through my mouth through my words or I can allow Holy Spirit to take God's words and make it a fire a, a consuming fire but a fire that can bring beauty beauty in every situation beauty in your emotions in your relationships in your finances in your future in that what you're going through beauty in your thought patterns if you allow God to make his word a fire in you i want to say point number one when we talk about first about fire i'm saying you cannot do do with fire whatever you want it will be stupid stupidious i know you have such an excellent word it can be very irresponsible but you cannot be handling the word without respect you must handle the word of God in an accurate way. Because like with fire, you cannot play with fire. You cannot play with the word. Point number one. Jeremiah 1 verse 7. But the Lord said to me, to Jeremiah, Do not say, I am too young. You must go to everyone I sent you to and say whatever I command you. It's not like God said to Jeremiah, don't lie. Don't talk a lot of nonsense. I mean, the facts, the facts are this man is very young. But God said, don't look at the facts. Don't, don't even speak the circumstance. Don't even speak the facts. But only speak what I'm telling you to say. Only say what I'm telling you to say. Wherever I say, you must say. So you cannot make a fire anywhere. You cannot make a fire anywhere, even with God's word. You can only say what God wants you to say, only there where God calls you to say it. Let it be so in Jesus' name. Amen. The location, the type of fire, the size of the fire, let's not destroy Let's have wisdom, but in the fear of God, make the fire where God wants you to make the fire. Chapter 1, verse 9, that's point 2. 
Then the Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, I have put my words in your mouth. He reached out his hand. He touched my mouth and he said, I have put my words in your mouth. Who is touching your mouth? There's a lot of hands ready, ready, ready to touch your mouth. The hand of your circumstance, of temptation, of the flesh, of your reasoning, of religion, of all the conspiracies. A lot of things that can happen, that can touch your mouth. Whose hand will touch your mouth? It all depends on who you allow to come close. When you are busy with the word of God, make sure that the Holy Spirit is close to you. That the Holy Spirit will take with his hand the words of God and touch you. Amen. And put God's word in your mouth. And don't let some other spirit, even the devil took the word of God and wanted to put in, in the mouth of a son of God. And say, but the word of God says this and the word of God says that. So you can even be busy with the word of God and it can be some other devil standing next to you and say, this is how you must eat the word. Take it and put it in this way in your mouth. Ask the Holy Spirit always to be there. That God's hand will be the closest to you, especially when you deal with the word of God. There can be a come of fire in you. Amen. Number three, chapter 20, verse 9. Chapter 20, verse 9. Mark it in your Bible, especially this verse. But if I say I will not mention his word, or speak any more in his name, his word is in my heart like a fire, a fire shut up in my bones. I am weary of holding it in. Indeed, I cannot. Oh, my brother, my sister, too many times there's this anger fire, this anger, these other stuffs in our lives that become the fire. And I cannot hold it in anymore. I'm weary of holding in this anger or this things inside here. And it want, just want to come out. And I cannot keep it in anymore. Oh, that's a destructive fire. But so much more, so much more, so much more, if I allow God, if I will allow God to take his word and put it in here and let it become a fire. Oh, that's a very great problem. That I, my problem is how to keep his word in because I cannot keep it in. I'm not speaking about Christ. I'm not speaking the word of God because I must. That's in the name of performance, some other, other thing. But I need to speak the word because it's burning inside here. It's like this cooking pot. And I cannot keep it in anymore. Oh, I challenge you to ask the Holy Spirit to make the word in you such a fire. That you cannot but think about God. You cannot also but, but speak about the awesomeness of your God. And about what he is saying. You just have to do that. Because it's a passion in you. It's a fire in you. And it, you cannot keep it in anymore. Let it be so. I bless you with that. That it will be so in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Next one. Point number four. Chapter one. Verse twelve. The Lord said to me, you have seen correctly, for I am watching to see that my word is fulfilled. God is giving attention to the word that he has placed in your heart. He's watching. He has faith that you will take that word, you will speak it forth, and that his word will be fulfilled. May you have the honor to be an agent of God, a spokesperson speaking forth his word so that his word will be fulfilled but he's watching he's giving attention but 
so in the same way the enemy is watching that you will take the words that he is putting in your heart, in your mouth, the words of stress, the words of fear, the words of own opinion, the words of deception, all those words, he, the enemy is watching, that you will speak it forth as you choose to believe it, so that he, the enemy, can fulfill the words that he placed in your mouth. Allow God in his fire to burn away all those words all those patterns in your mind in your heart you say god come purify burn it away that there will be only one word and that you are watching you giving attention to the word that you've placed in my mouth that it will be fulfilled let it be so in jesus name what an honor we have amen number five to receive discipline from God as your father take warning chapter 6 verse 8 discipline me Lord chapter 10 24 and then God you disciplined me chapter 31 chapter 31 verse where are we 18 31 verse 18 I have surely heard Ephraim's mourning. You disciplined me like an unruly calf, and I have been disciplined. Restore me and I will return, because you are the Lord, my God. You disciplined me. Why? Because you love me. We see in the word, even Hebrews 12, it's about a father disciplining his son. So if I allow God to put a certain pattern in my life so that I have the capacity to understand how to live, how to, to organize a certain lifestyle, to strategize my future under the guidance of the Holy Spirit with His wisdom, that pattern God wants to put into my life so that I will not destroy my life but that I can build a life that has eternal value. Let it be so in Jesus' name. Point number six, Father disciplines a child. We see in chapter 3, verse 4, God says that the, this nation is supposed to call him my father, my friend, from my youth. And verse 19, I thought you would call me father. I thought you will come as a child and reach out to me as your father. You will call me father. That is my God's desire. Hebrews 12, that's talking about a father disciplining his son. Because why? Every child that's not an illegitimate child, but a true, genuine, precious child of God, he will receive discipline because everyone that the father loves, he disciplines. So Father, with his heart of love, wants to reach out and put that pattern in you. Discipline not because you made the mistake. Discipline because you have potential. Discipline because he treats you, he honors you as his child. And in that, at the end of, at the end of that chapter of Hebrews 12, we see the last verse. For, for our God is a consuming fire. Revelation 3 also talks about through fire the gold is coming forth. With fire we can destroy, but may God help us that we will destroy only the rubbish in our lives. That there will not be a fire, a destructive fire that we will allow in us that will even destroy the beauty that's inside of us. No. But God, His fire, His word as fire, that will have the final say, the fire of God that will have the final say, so that beauty can come forth as gold purified, wow, coming forth through the fire. So, through God's fire, the wow in our lives, the beauty in our relationships, the beauty in our future, the beauty, beauty in our calling, in our, in our job, in our, in our dreams, that beauty we will be surprised at the beauty 
of life that will come forth through us and in us if we allow the word as a fire to work in us to work in us amen for our god is a consuming fire god wants to reveal himself through his word as a fire god wants to show himself to you but it can only happen through the fire that's bringing holiness because no flesh can stand before him because he is a consuming fire he does not want to destroy you. But for that, you need to walk in a lifestyle of holiness. You come, need to come into this place of His beauty. Because in His fire, you will see His beauty. That's where He wants to reveal Himself to you. I rather, my sister, allow God's Word. Have respect for the Word of God. And may the truth combined with the fear of God, be revealed through you. When you speak the word, when you speak, let the fire of God be in it, that people will start to respect your God, and they will understand who they are dealing with when they hear the word of God through your life. Because God is watching, having faith in you, that you will speak the pure word of God that he wants to fulfill in and through your life 30 60 100 fold harvest i bless you with that that it will be so in jesus name thank you my father oh come and touch our mouths come and put your words in our mouths let it become let it become a fire in us lord god that we cannot but speak about you but speak your word but speak what you are saying because it's such a fire in us lord i honor you that you give us that privilege that opportunity that we can speak forth and that your word can dwell richly in us as a fire let it be so and with every destructive fire with words that that my brother and my sister may be allowed in their lives oh god please come through your fire and let it overrule all other fires we honor you that you come and do that and touch our lives in such a way so we pray in jesus name amen amen let it be